my vanilla just became better. Welcome to Plants Family Farm. I'm excited today to share with all of you the update on the four and a half gallon total circulation method for making extract. Kind of like the big companies do, but on a smaller scale and at home. So let's recap a little bit so y'all know how I got to this point. I had 72 ounces of Madagascar grade A vanilla beans. And what I did was I cut the tips off and I split them down the center. I didn't scrape them, didn't do anything extra. I split them down the center. I do know from my past testing that using a vacuum seal on it will actually help open up the pores of the vanilla beans and allow more fluid to get in, which will allow more extraction of those flavor compounds. So what I did, the first 12 hours, I put all the vanilla beans, after I cut and, and split them, I put them into half gallon jars. I topped them off with the alcohol that I used, and I used this Captain Morgan Coconut Rum 70 proof. So I topped off the jars, I put a little vacuum seal on them, I let them sit for 12 hours. After the 12 hours, I put them in the container, and then I topped it off until I got my four and a half gallons of alcohol in here. Because that was my recipe for this, this method, which was 72 ounces of vanilla beans and four and a half gallons of the alcohol, 70 proof. And then from there, I didn't take no TDS readings at that point. I waited another 12 hours and then took my first TDS reading. I want to kind of make things clear with TDS readings. I get this question now, since we are starting to use something that we can meter our vanilla extract with, which is a TDS meter, is the biggest question I get, what's your target? What's your target parts per million? Uh, I don't have a target parts per million when it comes to extracting because all the vanilla beans are different and each batch of vanilla beans are gonna be a little different. They're only gonna give off so much. So that's what I'm looking for when I'm taking TDS readings. I wanna watch those numbers daily, and then when they rise up and peak, that's where I, everything starts to get interesting because that peak means they're not giving off any more total dissolved solids. They are finished giving off their flavor compounds uh, and all the a vanilla that's in there into the fluid. So that's what I'm looking for. I'm looking for it to peak and then level out. Also, when you're doing TDS readings, a big thing to keep in mind is the temperature. Temperature affects your TDS readings quite significantly. Uh, an eight degree difference in the room or in your fluid can mean 20, 30 parts per million change. Um, so just be aware of that. I've had some hot days, cold days, and it does affect it. But I do take note of it uh, when I'm doing it. I always take a reading on the side, in the fluid, make sure everything's good. And then I just correlate that with my readings on my spreadsheet. I will show you a spreadsheet on this, on how it went. That way you can understand what I'm reading and what I'm seeing. All right, so now let's get into, does this thing really work? It does. It is shocking on how well it does work. This is a game changer for all of us that are making a, a few gallons of extract and you're selling it uh, at farmer's markets or whatever. You're, you want to up your game a little bit. Uh, I know this is a game changer for me because I do anywhere between 15 to 20 gallons of extract a year for my clients. Uh, I'm not trying to grow my business. I have certain clients and uh, friends, friends and family that I sell to on a regular basis and I'm not looking to expand that to go public or anything. But this does help me uh, control when I make it, how I make it, or when I can have it available to my clients a little bit better than the old shake the jar method. Plus, it's less effort, less time uh, consuming. 
this thing is amazing. So after I did the 12 hour vacuum seal and dumped them in there, I didn't take a reading until 12 hours later. So 12 hours after uh, I got them in here and got circulating, the color was incredible within that first 12 hours, a huge change. And I took a reading. My first parts per million reading on this for TDS was right around 475 parts per million. 475 was kind of 10 days ahead of what normal extract in a bottle would be. But things start changing from there after 12 hours. So the color's changing, everything's changing. The one thing I did notice was with the original way I had it set up, uh, there was some dead spots in the container because uh, the beans went all the way down to the side and I did have the screen around the pump, but I felt like the fluid there, I just felt like there was some dead spots. So I made some changes. I pulled everything out. I, ra I, I put the pump on the bottom again, but I put a platform in there uh, above the pump. So now that the beans are above the pump and then there's the, a sump or a void on the bottom, this made sure that the fluid got around the beans and dropped down past the beans to the pump. So that made a big difference. It also made a difference on how efficient the pump was too, because it stayed free from debris a lot longer. And I say that because I haven't touched the pump in 35 days. Because today's 35 days and I haven't touched the pump. Uh, it is running a little slower than normal, but I suspect there's some vanilla seeds in there. I suspect some beans did get around the pump and slowing that flow, but I'm still happy with it. I still got great flow and I'm just gonna let it run until today. 12 hours after extraction, we got the 475. A couple days later, we're up to six something, 623. And I was like, wait a minute, this thing's going, the color's changing, it's up to 623. I did a little taste test. You could tell there's vanilla in there. Uh, the color looked, after a couple days, the color looked almost as good as some of my stuff that was a year and a half old. But taste testing, the vanilla flavor was there, but you could tell it was very, very light. All right, so let's jump ahead to day eight. So day eight, the color has doubled. Uh, it's the it's the darkest extract I've seen to date with Madagascar's uh, compared to my past extracts that I've done. But I still have some that are a year and a half and, and two years old that I could do some comparison to. The color of this after day eight was far better than the stuff that was older. Significantly darker. I mean, big change. Now the flavor on day eight was was incredible. It had a great vanilla flavor. You could still tell though, it was a little light on the flavor. The, uh, I tasted it in sugar. Uh, got that flavor in there. It was beautiful. It was it was kind of right there with my extract that was a year and a half old. In fact, at that point, I think it was a little bit better than my extract uh, that I currently have in a bottle. But I didn't want to make any assumptions at this point. But I did notice the alcohol was a little bit smoother. Didn't have that bite to it. The alcohol is still present, but it didn't have that bite to it. It was just this weird feel uh, in my mouth. Just taking the vanilla extract straight. I'm not supposed to do that, but I wanted to do it anyway. Take it straight and just kind of see where it was. You could tell the alcohol was present, but it didn't have that bite. It was strange for me because usually you get a little bit of a bite. 
Um, but I do know the coconut rum takes away from that a little bit also. All right, so that's day eight. Now, I'm starting to get a little bit more information from people. So typically when I go out and I start researching this and start asking questions, I don't get a lot of answers back uh, from some of the people that I've asked. But after I released the first video, I started getting messages from people I have no idea who they are or where they're coming from. They end up being distillers or people in the industry, uh, maybe not vanilla industry, but some other aspects. I don't want to give up too much, but uh, other aspects of the industry, mostly distillers uh, and people who make alcohol, messaging me, talking to me about the aeration. Because some people have concerns about the aeration with the pump and everything going. Well, come to find out, distillers use the same type of method of aerating their alcohol to mellow it. I had no, I had no clue that that was a process. So that took my guard down for the aeration process. I have seen other companies use aeration. Uh, method so I wasn't too concerned about it in the beginning uh, but it was always something that I was cautious of so after some messages between a few people uh, I learned it was a common practice so and now I realized why that mouthfeel was different from the other alcohols and other extracts that I had used promising right Total different animal from doing it in the jar. A little bit smoother, less bite. The vanilla is kind of popping at this point. So I did, you know, at the eight days I did the taste test. I'm like, okay, how fast is this really going? So I did another, uh, of course I'm still taking TDS readings daily. And I'm charting everything. So I don't need to take a taste test every day. But at 10 days, I took another taste test. Did it change? Yeah, it changed over that 10 days. TDS readings, still still bouncing right in the same area, the 700 range. Uh, it's never gone above 780, and it kind of bounces back between 722 and 780. Back in there, I think at one point, I did get like 795, 791. But... Uh, never peaked that, and it could have been the temperature uh, at that day. I, I'd have to look at the chart right now to recall that. I, I will show that chart here so y'all can see it and see the readings that I got for this batch. But, um, yeah, after 10 days, the flavor did increase. Um, but at that point, it kind of peaked out. Because I took some reading or took some testing about 12 days. About every two days I was taking a taste test. So 12 days it kind of peaked out. Or 10 days it kind of peaked out. I really didn't see a change. There might have been some changes going on in there. But I do know that the alcohol, the water, and the vanilla and the flavor compounds are all kind of melding together and finding their place some of them are gonna some of those compounds are gonna drop out uh, with that chemical reaction going on but with this total circulation all that's happening so much faster because it is constantly moving and it's keeping those molecules moving in there uh, so it does happen faster incredibly enough we're talking 12 days and I've got an extract that is better than my stuff. I even hate to say that. I've been making this this recipe right here for 10 years. I've been making vanilla for 30 years, but this particular recipe for 10 years, and this right here is, at the, I, I believe at my point, it's better than, than my extract here. And this is a year and a half. So that was my personal, I'm sitting here, mad scientist, trying to figure this out. I'm doing the taste testing. I'm shocked on how well this is working versus the jar method and the stuff that we all do at home. 
I, I can't believe it. So about day 20, I had some friends over here and they're interested in the vanilla. They're clients of mine. And I said, hey, you guys willing to do a taste test? I, I need an honest opinion uh, other than my own. So we did a taste testing and I pulled vanilla out of this jar. I pulled vanilla out of my jars and then I got a couple other test samples jars. Basically the same recipe. Uh, just the ages are a little bit differently. A uh, year and a half, two years old. And the consensus was at the very end, this was the preferred taste. So the methods of the shaking of the jars, uh, the aging and, and stuff like that didn't matter because the preferred taste was this. So we are making extract for taste and this means a lot to me <clears throat> because I want repeat customers. Uh, it's all about the taste. It doesn't matter how you process it, everything, because the end result is, can you sell it? Can you use it for baking? Is it a preferred taste? At the end, this was. Um, shocked me. I'm changing things the way I'm, I'm making extract. It's going to make a better extract for me. Uh, because one of the reasons I make so much extract, because I use it for a couple other projects that I do uh, for baking and uh, a few other things. So I need the extract. And it's a better, it smells so good in here right now. <laughs> the vanilla is just incredible. The whole reason I do testing is because I want to make the best vanilla flavored extract I can. Can I make it in a timely manner? Can I speed up the process? I Less effort, the better for me because it's time consuming. I don't want to wait that the much time because if for some reason I go through all my extract and I've had that happen where I got a couple gallons of extract and my plans changed and I ended up using it all. Well, I didn't have any more to finish off what I was making. That year I ended up having to buy some extract and I hated it. Uh, I didn't even like my finished product when I was done with it. So I tried not to do that anymore. Uh, I try to make extra now, make sure I have it on hand. But this changes things because we're talking 35, this is total 35 days today. Nothing has really changed after 20 days. Well, actually after 10 days. Uh, in my opinion, there might be some reaction still going on in here. But after that 10 days or the 20 days when, the, when everybody taste tested it and it was the preferred taste of extract, this is a game changer for all of us who are wanting to step up the game a little bit, making a little bit more for whatever you're doing it for. Uh, this works. There's a reason why some of the big companies are using the total circulation. I am totally, totally sold on this method. I am working on a prototype now uh, with a stainless steel tank and food grade pumps that all of you can, if you're looking to do two to 14 gallons, you could do it at home uh, with food grade equipment and make a beautiful extract. Uh, the, the cost of increase will be significant compared to something like this, but uh, uh, that's what I'm doing. I'm sharing it with all of you guys. So if this is something that you're interested in, because the truth of the matter is these companies aren't waiting a year to get an extract. I can see why they're not waiting a year because the numbers don't lie. The science doesn't lie. The taste testing does not lie. Uh, it, my opinion doesn't matter. My client's opinion matters. So when they come and they tell me, hey, this is the preferred method, it doesn't matter how I got to this point. This is what they want. So the aging, all the other stuff, I don't think at this point it's ever going to change in flavor. 
I could leave these beans in there, but I can't afford to do that. Uh, I have a lot of money invested in this. I've got to get this vanilla out, and I'm going to get it out today and start bottling. But one of the things I am going to do is I do have a press, and I've never pressed my vanilla beans before. I've always just taken them out, dehydrated them, and uh, saved them for vanilla sugar or for decoration in some of my bottles that uh, I do because... Uh, I typically, in my bottles, will throw in a couple of dried vanilla beans or a couple of spent vanilla beans in there for aesthetics and, and vi the visual appearance. But uh, lately I haven't been doing that. i uh, just been using it for vanilla sugar. But I, I've been wanting to try my press, but I have enough vanilla beans here that I'm going to throw them in my press, see how much I get out. I'm going to take that fluid and mix it in with this fluid and uh, we'll see what that looks like so what I'm going to do now is I'm going to go ahead and cut it off here I'm going to go take uh, these out get them in the press and I'll come back and I'll show you the finished product from this and you can see the, the difference between the, the colors all right just wanted to show you this real quick um, I'm not showing all the process because uh, I cut my finger off the other day and yep it's a little difficult to film and get all this stuff done but anyway this is a little fruit fruit press I got all the vanilla beans uh, out of the big jug and I have this basket here or screen and all the vanilla beans in there so what I'm going to do is I'm going to wrap this up get my box on there and I'll bring you back when I start pressing it but I'm running out of daylight. But it's absolutely beautiful out right now. So I'm going to go ahead and get this set up. And I'll come back when I start pressing it. All right, I'm back. Uh, I've never pressed them before. I thought this would be a good opportunity because I had a large volume of vanilla beans and I was kind of curious of what I would get out of it from pressing them. So after drip drying for about an hour, putting them in the press, I got about three quarters of a quart of fluid out. Well, probably about 32 ounces, about a quart of fluid out of it including a little bit of residual that was in in here and all I did is I took that fluid added it to my bulk extract stirred it all in and went from there uh, I went right into bottling and as you can see here got most of my bottles filled and then I took the pressed beans so this is what it looks like i call these cakes so every time i press fruit fruit or anything like that it always comes up looking like a big cake and uh, this is compacted looks beautiful smells wonderful in here but from here i am going to go into dehydration dehydrate these and then i'll grind these up and use them for other things that i have uh, it's it's got a ton of seeds in here uh, that's just great for the visual but yeah this looks great um heck of a process all right so i filled all my bottles and now here i am i am gonna sh i hope it shows up on camera here but this is my year and a half old extract it's opaque. It's got the scum on the top. Everybody's used to the scum. That's what you get when you get the vanilla breakdown. The vanilla beans break down inside the jars from shaking it and agitating them all that, that much. Uh, so you're going to get this. This is totally normal. With the total circulation, all you're doing is stirring the beans every now and then. And the fluid is running over the beans. So what I did notice is there is a little bit of scum. 
uh, on the top of the neck here, but not as much as the other. And in, even in the bottles, there wasn't that, uh, the scum that you would get on your jars. So it is cleaner. I never ran this through a filter. Usually when I do my bottling and take it out of the jars, I have a fine mesh stainless steel coffee filter. Uh, I don't like using cloth filters because it, it kind of takes away some of the flavors, but the stainless steel doesn't do that. I did not have to run it through that and, and remove some of that. With the bottling wand here, or with the wand and siphoning from the bottom, it's got a little filter on it going in there. Um, I didn't get those chunks and it didn't break down the beans like you would with the jar with beating them up all the time. The, the new bottles with the total circulation, much cleaner. Uh, I'm, I'm, I truly am impressed on this whole process, but the coloration of them, this one here is a little bit lighter in color, and these ones here are darker, probably by a half again. I, I don't even know how to explain it. It's probably it's not twice as dark, but three quarters darker than than this. So I, I hope that's visible. That's why I'm shining the light on these two here that these are darker. So this is my, my standard. Uh, same thing with my bigger bottles. So these are my 12 ounce bottles. The color on it, you can't see through it. I mean, I could put the light on the other side and you can't see through it. So there is a lot of solids in there. Uh, I'm I'm really impressed with this method. I, I, I am really shocked because I had no idea what I was going to get. I knew it was going to be a little bit better because we all know circulation and getting the fluid moving is better. You're just going to get a better extract. The more you agitate them, the more you get fluid around them. Uh, that's just the nature of the beast. But as fast as this work, keeping that fluid and keeping that fluid f fresh around those beans... Uh, is incredible on how quick this is. So my final thoughts on this, I am going to try to figure out how to scale this down a little bit for people who are doing maybe half gallons or gallons, and then also going to scale up to people who are doing anywhere between 2 to 14 gallons. And be compliant with all the food laws and licensing and stuff like that for the homemaker, uh, for all those that are doing the small business from their home. Uh, I'm going to try to figure out a few of these things um, for all of us because uh, this is the method. And I understand why big companies use this method. It was a lot less effort on my end. Uh, you can do this amount. I could do this amount right now every 30 days. I don't have to wait that time. My taste testers like this versus my old stuff. And I need to change my game. I need to change my method to this. So I am, I'm deeply impressed with how the circulation worked. It's the fastest. Scientifically proven, it's faster. Uh, the numbers don't lie. So my final thoughts on this, my vanilla just became better. And that's what I'm trying to do. I'm trying to create the best vanilla product I can for my clients and for what I'm using vanilla for. I hope this was a useful video for all of you uh, who are thinking about total circulation, who are talking about making extracts and the, the, the quickness of it. I know some of you are going to hate on me about time frame and aging and all that other stuff. And that's okay. Uh, I'm just here to show you what the possibilities are and proven the science behind what's going on. And there's a reason why they're, um, 
the big companies use this method. But the taste test for me, with my clients coming in here and telling me they like this better than what I've been doing in the past, says it all for me. Um, so I let my clients dictate how I do things. So 30 days, from start to finish, 30 days. And I have a better product than I've been doing uh, for the last 10 years. All right, I'm sitting here editing the video and I needed to clarify a couple things. I said 30 days on here. It was actually done in 20 days uh, with the taste testing and everything. The taste never did change after the 20 days. Uh, so I always give everything a, an extra week or so or an extra 10 days just to kind of make sure uh, before I make a decision to start bottling things. But this time it was 20 days. I don't know how you can get it any shorter than that and have a great product. But I do know that with my other testing I have done that the vanilla beans change from batch to batch. It could be the same type of vanilla beans. Madagascar's today versus Madagascar's in six months could be a total different animal. Vanilla bean is a plant. And just like anything, the weather affects the flavor. Uh, when the farmers harvest, uh, everything uh, affects it. What what fertilizers they're using, if any, and the region. Uh, they're not all grown on the same property. So that does affect it. And all vanilla beans are a little differently. I, I know that from the testing. So today's batch at 30 days, the next batch could take 35, 40 days. So that's why I do the TDS uh, testing. That way I know what's going on. And then I just wait for them to peak and then flatten out. Um, then I know that the vanilla beans are done, giving off all the flavor compounds and the solids that they can give at that point. So anyway, I just wanted to clarify that a little bit. I really do hope you enjoy my videos. And if you know any testing that you want to see me do in the future please let me know in the comments if you made it this far you're lucky i have come up with a solution for a smaller batch of that that is food grade i'm going to give you a little sneak peek right now yep so what's the most of the business is up here not down here but anyway, there's a sneak peek of what's going on. Uh, from the time that I did that video till now, I have figured out a few things to do small batches with total circulation. That is all food grade. And I'm waiting all the parts to come in now. And I'll be doing a sh video probably mid-January um, 2024 on this system and I can't wait because it's incredible. I think I got it all figured out where all of you can purchase this stuff online uh, on Amazon and build your system at home and you can go from half gallon to 14 gallons, all expandable. Anyway, that's it from Clements Family Farm. I hope you enjoyed this video again. And make sure you like and subscribe to my channel. And give me a big thumbs up. And we'll see you the next time.